So here's the thing about post-apocalyptic games. They're never really about zombies. Not good narrative-based ones, anyway. They are explorations into the human condition. We are able to see humans in a primal state, forced to truly survive. The Last of Us, the original Last of Us, was set in a zombie apocalypse and was largely composed of player shooting and stabbing and sc scarce resources and all those things that you expect out of an apocalypse. But I think everyone knows at this point that that game was really just a character study of Joel Miller and his adoptive daughter, Ellie. Joel was never really a hero. He did plenty of cruel and inhumane acts in order to stay alive and to protect Ellie. Ellie then became a character that players were inherently attached to fundamentally as a character that needed protection from the harsh world who despite her potty mouth and combat abilities contained a certain innocence that one expects from a child we grew to love ellie through the eyes of joel and thus when his final decision came you know to slaughter the entirety of the firefly hospital at the expense of what was essentially a cure for the apocalypse, a saving grace for humanity. All for the sake of his daughter, players were left with a moral dilemma unlike any other in gaming. On one hand, this guy literally doomed humanity because of his selfishness. On the other hand, it was for our Ellie. And then The Last of Us 2 hits and they had to do the big old 180 and smash in Joel's head at the end of the intro. Listen, I don't think that that's the problem of the game. I think it does set up the plot in a necessary way. What other event logically would inspire a revenge so deeply in Ellie? There isn't one. So then Ellie goes through this entire plot of going with her girlfriend on a mission to seek revenge on that damn buff lady who wh whacked her daddy too hard and then boom. The old switcheroo. <laughs> You go through the motions as Ellie, understand and likely agree with her motivations this whole time. And then Naughty Dog says, oh, you thought this would be so simple, you complete buffoon. And then we switch from a character we know and love to a character at this point that we likely hate. And thus begins five plot hours of Naughty Dog trying to convince us that this person is not as much of a villain <laughs> as beating our previous protagonist to death would imply. Does it work? Yes. Does it make it any less foreboding when at the climax of this plot, Abby and Ellie finally have their confrontation that we've been dreading in the theater? No. It's still crazy horrible <laughs> to walk in there as Abby knowing that you're on the hunt for Ellie. A lot of gamers probably felt really hurt and betrayed and this highly extended switcheroo left them mad um, if the Metacritic scores <laughs> have anything to say about it. This switching of perspectives, although jarring, does bring on the point of this video and in a way the game. Ellie, throughout the course of this adventure, becomes a villain, while Abby, who you would think at first is probably the villain of this game, really becomes the hero. Now, here's the thing, I think the terms hero and villain aren't really good <laughs> uh, in terms of this situation because the whole point of this game is that every decision has multiple perspectives and one over the other isn't going to be objectively correct or even good. Better terms to describe the situation would be that Ellie is selfish leaning, whereas Abby is selfless leaning. Leaning being used here because neither of these characters are completely one or the other. But I'm going to use the terms hero and villain anyway because at this point it's just more convenient. What Naughty Dog has created is a dichotomy, two characters acting perfectly in parallel to one another, but on different sides. Sort of like Raylo from Star Wars, if you will, you know, where both are 
intertwined fundamentally but opposed except in this situation it's not light versus dark it's a whole bunch of gray which i think is more interesting by the way but let's take a moment to establish some similarities between the characters before we talk about their key differences they're both established to be girls deeply tied to their fathers they both experience the loss of their fathers, and then that naturally manifests as a need for revenge that consumes them, even when they're supposed to be happy. Specifically shown in Abby when, you know, she has this big romantic scene in the aquarium with Owen, but she's unable to fully surrender to the happiness because she goes, Oh, wait, Owen, oh no, what about Joel? And then Owen's like, Are you joking? Um, in Ellie, we see her sleeplessness and her distraction and an inability to forget about the death of her father even when she's in an idyllic theoretically perfect family life situation both are communities that they are tied to at the beginning of the last of us 2 and both view those communities as the correct way of life. And both are even in messy love triangle situations that involve pregnancy and scandals. In essence, both are given similar situations with similar stakes. But here's the thing, all sources of grief in both of their lives, really, are pretty much directly caused by Ellie and Joel. Abby loses her father and her entire Firefly community because of Joel. And then she loses her remaining friends, love interest, and also in part her entire community in the form of the wolves because of Ellie. The community less so, but Ellie certainly didn't help. <laughs> she is really just a victim of the protagonist that we have come to love. Meanwhile, Ellie has lost one thing because of Abby, Joel. And then when all is said and done, she loses Jesse, I guess. Um, but in the end, he was kind of like her rival and because of the whole, you know, messy love triangle situation, killing him kind of was a necessary step in giving Ellie her perfect family life. So maybe actually Ellie should have thanked Abby for that. Simply numerically speaking, Abby has lost way, way, way more than Ellie in this rivalry, and both have lost their fathers from it. Looking at the whole situation objectively, it's pretty clear that Ellie is in the wrong. But we as players aren't really going to consider that emotionally, because most people aren't making tally marks of, oh, meaningful body counts <laughs> um, inflicted by opposite parties as, as a means of deciding their opinion on the situation. That's just not how normal functioning emotional people work. Ultimately, the final piece that cements Ellie as a selfish, villainous character is in an act that Naughty Dog creates. And it just seems like it was to make players look at their TV screen and go, no, 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 Ellie, no. Just screaming mad is when Ellie leaves her perfect family, a rare and precious thing to have in the post-apocalyptic setting, to go on a quest to finally kill Abby. Dina is established throughout this entire experience as pretty much being the ideal partner. You know, she's loving, supportive, kind-hearted, but also badass and capable of surviving. She's not a burden, except for, you know, when she's pregnant and throwing up and everything. But even then, it's like, she stays out of the way. She's not, you're not concerned about her survival in this situation. And they even have a kid now, the ultimate sim symbol of proving your selflessness and caring over a defenseless being, and then Ellie says, fuck them kids, <laughs> and leaves on the whim of killing Abby. Not even concrete knowledge of where she is, just on the whim, the thought of killing her, she leaves. And by the way, Abby has already let Ellie live twice now. So, what the heck? <laughs> you did this for what? But you did this for what? Why not? <laughs> Why? Why not? <laughs> Why though? This act, in pretty much every way, cements Ellie 
as the true villain of the story, ultimately selfish, just like Joel. That's the point here. Ellie has taken after her father, right? She too makes a decision driven by nothing more than selfishness, a desire to keep his daughter over the lives of literally everyone else on the planet. Huh? And now Ellie makes the same choice with less, you know, objective stake, stakes in the situation, but just as much emotional impact here. And contrast that with Abby, who throughout the course of the story also gains an adoptive child in the form of Lev, and is still, even when dying, focusing on that child above all else, truly selfless for that child. The best part of the paternal relationship is that drive to do everything you can for that child. It just really makes Ellie look like even more of a shit. <laughs> Honestly, I think the choice of leaving her child is kind of unbelievable on Naughty Dog's part. She shows hesitation. She's not a complete monster, obviously, but that's because Nobody really is a monster in this situation. Her drive for revenge being more important than the love of her family feels just, there's, there's no other word for it, but unbelievable. Joel's selfishness was extreme and cataclysmic, but believable. We all loved Ellie as much as he did, and many could see themselves making that same choice that he did. But Ellie's choice, her obsession with killing Abby, it's beyond selfishness. It shows an evolution of Joel's flaw, not just a repetition. That is the problem. When we as an audience fail to justify the actions of a person, fail to relate to that perspective, that is the moment that Naughty Dog decided that our little darling Ellie had turned into a villain. And that sucks, it's hurtful. But does that mean the whole journey is just horrible? No, if the point of the game is to make me look at all the things that the series has done and question it all, which I believe was the point that Naughty Dog was trying to make here, um, then they made, they made good on what they wanted to do. They made a tragedy. So many fans will leave feeling cheated and betrayed, hateful, and probably like they need to go on a revenge path of their own against the developers. But they need to understand that not every story is a happy one. And that sucks. But this is a story about the failures of humanity. Players are willing to accept constant, you know, emotional battles <laughs> throughout this series. Like the it's never happy. It has never been happy. There's constant fighting and fighting and fighting and torture and just the absolute proving of the worst parts of human nature. But they're unwilling to accept the reality that when your adolescence is shaped by these events, you become villainized or you can become villainized. Like, what? <laughs> if you grew up constantly being subjected to horrors, do you expect Ellie to not grow up a little messed up? But yes, I'm not heartless, okay? It, <laughs> it hurts seeing this little girl grow up to be the villain. It's hard. It's hard to see someone you love become anything other than perfect so yes I was upset as well <laughs> but I don't think it's a matter of the plot being horrible I don't think that's a fair critique I think it's pretty cool that a game can make me feel this passionate and this disappointed and this sad but also this hopeful you know that I think the creation of these emotions is the point I don't think it's to walk away saying, oh, that was, a, that was a lovely little ending, oh, I'm so happy, you know? If you wanted a comedy, go play Uncharted. At the same time, did I need half of the game to be about Abby? Well, probably not. You probably didn't have to give me that many hours with Abby in order to convince me that she is probably the better outcome of how somebody can turn out in this sort of post-apocalypse. But I'm not walking away from the experience 
expecting it to be anything other than what it was. Yes, it would be nice if Ellie was happy in the end, and with her family on the farm, and if Dina had stayed waiting, but at the same time you can't expect that either. Dina had her own will, and if your partner left you to go, you know, on a whim, risking it all, I, I don't think I could expect anyone to just be okay with that. Um, and that's also sad and hurtful, but it's not the reality of the world that Naughty Dog is creating to say that everything should have ended up happy, and they won't fault them for that. I'm just gonna assume that in the end, Ellie walks off alone, and she's gonna go try and find her family in Jackson and make everyone happy and just live in a happy life, and that's it. <laughs> anyway, look at those huge, humongous, chonky arms, yo, crazy, she's just so buff, like crazy buff, oh my god. Wow, that's just... I mean some serious honkers, a real set of badonkers. Packing some Doban Honkeros. Massive the Hunka Bankaloos. Humongous Hunga Longa No No Logongas.